for us very very important one is semiconductors these semiconductors are classified into two categories intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors the second one is extrinsic semiconductors are impure semiconductors these extrinsic semiconductors are impure semiconductors once again classified into two categories n type semiconductor p type semiconductor n type semiconductor and p type semiconductor now first we'll start with the intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor pure semiconductor or intrinsic semiconductor this is example for this pure semiconductor is silicon and germanium is that in that intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor now what is its properties what is this one we'll see now for that purpose we require a crystal structure okay it's a four dimension it's a three dimensional view okay we are going to see it's a take it as a silicon or germanium for simplicity purpose i will take it as silicon there are four valence electrons it's a fourth group element silicon and germanium are fourth group element that means it will have four valence electrons the previous shells are fully occupied but the outermost shell is having four valence electrons so how it's a new to actually any crystal is a neutral so i have represented negative charges electrons outside therefore i am indicating plus 4 plus 4 minus 4 is neutral silicon the next one it's silicon it's plus 4 1 2 3 4 simply now i am indicating it's only plus 4 it's nothing but silicon what is going to happen now these are silicon atoms are there for a stability purpose each atom requires eight valence electrons but there exists a four valence electrons only so what is going to happen is these four valence electrons form say covalent bonds with the four neighboring atoms so this valence electron forms a covalent bond with this valence electron it's sharing covalent bond this is another covalent bond this is another covalent bond this is another covalent bond now see this one how many valence electrons are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 got the stability or not always their atoms aim is to get the stability now four valence electrons will share the or forms a four covalent bond with the neighboring atoms nothing but they are sharing the electrons valence electrons therefore stability is achieved similarly this also forms covalent bonds with this one this one actually if you draw this one it's a three dimensional therefore here a one more atom will be there like this similarly this all this right now forms a covalent bond with the neighboring atoms therefore it is stable this forms next like this 
next like this next up upper or back side like this okay if you see in this one all atoms forms a covalent bonds with the neighboring valence electrons so all atoms are stable any free electron is available no free electron is available free electron is not available means it is conductor or in semiconductor or insulator no free electron is available therefore it is a insulator therefore already i said semiconductor at 0 degree kelvin at absolute zero the starting point at 0 degree kelvin acts as an insulator because there is no availability of charge carriers clear first point now temperature is increased that means thermal and uh, room temperature okay 27 degree centigrade that is nothing but 300 degree kelvin some of the that means you are supplying the thermal energy temperature is increased means thermal energy is given thermal means temperature thermal energy is given because of the thermal energy some of the valence electron some of the valence electron may acquire the energy to become a free electron let us suppose this electron acquires the energy so it becomes free electron now absence of electron becomes hole so this is hole this one is free electron is clear this is free electron this is hole let us suppose one more covalent bond is broken this becomes free electron now here absence of electron is hole assume there is a one more covalent bond is broken here hole will be formed here electron is formed so how many holes are there 1 2 3 how many free electrons are there 1 2 3 3 therefore as temperature increases what happens to some of the covalent bonds some of the covalent bonds will be broken some of the covalent bonds are broken that means electron that's called free electron hole pair is generated free electron hole pair is generated now if you see how many electrons are there here free electrons three how many holes are there three therefore this in this intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor number of electrons is equals to number of holes in a pure semiconductor and intrinsic semiconductor number of electrons is equals to number of electrons in the sense always I said the number of electron default is unit as a free electron. If it is a valence electron, I will explicitly will mention it as a valence electron. Otherwise, if I mention it as an electron, means default is unit as a free electron. If it is a valence electron, I will pronounce it as I will I will give it as valence electron. So, for an intrinsic semiconductor, number of electrons is equal to number of holes. Okay. Now. what is the disadvantage of this pure semiconductor the number of charge carriers the electrons and holes are very small because of small number of electrons and holes conductivity is very less conductivity is very less that is the disadvantage conductivity is very less This is the disadvantage of pure semiconductor or intrinsic semiconductor. To overcome this disadvantage, we are going for impure semiconductor or extrinsic semiconductor. Impure semiconductor or extrinsic semiconductor. 
what this intrinsic uh, pure uh, impure semiconductor is going to do we'll see why we are going for impure semiconductors to increase conductivity to increase conductivity we are going for impure semiconductors now how to increase the conductivity we are taking a silicon or germanium we are adding impurities that resulting is called impure or extrinsic semiconductor we are taking either silicon or germanium we are adding impurities the resulting one is called impure or extrinsic semiconductor the process of adding impurity is called doping the process of adding impurities is called doping Now, the impurities that can be added are either third group elements or fifth group elements. Third group element example are boron, aluminium, gallium. Okay, like this. Fifth group elements are phosphorus, arsenic, antimony. Okay, like most commonly used is phosphorus. The second one is arsenic. Here the most commonly used either boron or aluminium. Because if you go as top, increase the conductivity increases. Okay, that's why here these two are most commonly used one. Here these two are most commonly used one. So to increase the conductivity, we are going for adding impurities to the pure semiconductor. The resulting one is called extrinsic semiconductor or impure semiconductor. The process of adding impurities is called doping. What is the need for doping? To increase the conductivity. What are the impurities that can be added? Either you can add fifth group elements. Or you can add third group elements. If we add silicon, if we take silicon or germanium, add fifth group elements. The resulting semiconductor is called n-type semiconductor. The resulting semiconductor is called n-type semiconductor. Take the silicon or germanium, add third group elements. The resulting semiconductor is called p-type semiconductor. The resulting semiconductor is called P type semiconductor. Now we'll start with the first one is N type semiconductor. N type semiconductor. Here we are adding fifth group elements. Fifth group elements are added. Example: phosphorus, arsenic. Okay, most commonly used one. Now, if you add phosphorus to a silicon, what is the crystal structure? And we are adding one part in ten power eight. The doping concentration is. 1 part in 10 power 8. What is the meaning of 1 part in 10 power 8? For 10 power 8 phosphorus atoms, sorry, for 10 power 8 silicon atoms, for 10 power 8 silicon atoms, one phosphorus atom is added. That is called 1 part in 10 power 8. For 10 power 8 phosphorus silicon atoms, one phosphorus atom is added. So that is called 1 part in 10 power 8. Now comes to the crystal structure. 
take this as a silicon, we are indicating it as, sorry, one part in phosphorus, it is having five valence electrons indicating like this. Now less number of phosphorus atoms, more number of silicon atoms. Therefore, we are taking a three-dimensional, taking one point here, one phosphorus atom is there, the surrounding are silicon atoms, here plus 5, here plus 4, okay, similarly here plus 4. So, now what is going to happen, it is a three dimensional, its extension is there, that is whatever you have taken on a two dimension plain paper, this forms a covalent bond for stability purpose, forms a covalent bond stable, stability covalent bond, covalent bond, covalent bond, covalent bond. room temperature at uh, uh, before going for room temperature now see here phosphorus atom is having five valence electrons one two three four five these out of these five valence electrons four valence electrons forms a covalent bond with the four neighboring silicon atoms to achieve the stability now what about this one it is not formed any covalent bond. It is not formed any covalent bond. Now, what is this forbidden energy gap indicates the amount of energy required to move an electron from the valence band to conduction band, which is, this is nothing but Eg, which is approximately equals to one electron volt we know already. That means, if you give one electron, around one electron volt, this covalent bond is broken, this free, uh, valence electron becomes a free electron and whole pair is generated. Now, this is not formed, this is not formed any covalent bond. Then how much energy has to be given to becoming it as a free electron? Whether this energy required to make this free electron as a free electron is equal to amount of energy required to make this electron as a free electron? No. Very, 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 very small energy is sufficient to make this electron is a, as a free electron. You don't require one electron volt, very, very, very small. How much? That is 0.05 electron volt is required if it is a silicon 0.01 electron volt is required if it is a germanium. Now, what is the meaning of that thing? If you give for this valence electron approximately around 0.05 electron volt, it becomes a free electron if it is a silicon. If it is a germanium, only 0.01 electron volt is sufficient, which is easily obtained, which is easily obtained. Therefore, no need of going for room temperature at uh, very small, small temperature or at uh, what we can say nearer to 0 degree centigrade or my, I am sorry, my, uh, 0 degree Kelvin, this electron acquires the energy and becomes free electron. 
Now we know this much gap is required that is one electron volt but here is only 0.01. How to differentiate? For that purpose here we are going to indicate one energy level known as donor energy level. What is this donor energy level gap? This gap is equals to 0.01 electron, 0.01 electron volt if it is a germanium, 0.05 electron volt if it is a silicon. So this electron becomes a free electron, nothing but it goes to conduction band. If you give 0.01 or 0.05, that depends on either silicon or germanium. Is clear? So now the important thing is you given 0.01 electron volt, this valence electron becomes a free electron, whether hole will be created or not. No hole is created. Hole will be created if you break the covalent bond and free electron hole pair is generated, else no hole will be created. Clear that's another important point. Now this electron becomes a free electron. This valence electron has become a free electron by giving a small amount of energy and since covalent bond is not broken, therefore free, oh sorry, hole is not generated, whereas electron is generated. Now at room temperature, what is going to happen? This covalent bond is broken, assume that here hole and here electron, free electron. Let us suppose this covalent bond, some covalent bond, okay, this covalent bond is broken, this electron becomes a hole and free electron. Now how many free electrons are there? 1, 2, 3. How many holes are there? 1, 2. I have taken a small number, small figure. Here only number of electrons are more than number of holes. If you take like this 5 into 10 power 23 atoms per centimeter cube, 1 centimeter cube I will have 5 into 10 power 23. If you take that many, we will have so many number of electrons and so many number of holes. And in entire semiconductor, see 1, 2, 3 electrons, 1, 2 holes. Therefore, therefore, in n-type semiconductor, I will write it here, in n-type semiconductor, Electrons are more than, greater than holes. These are called, electrons are called majority charge carriers. Majority charge carriers. Holes are called minority charge carriers. Okay. Electrons are called majority charge carriers. Holes are called minority charge carriers and number of electrons are more than number of holes. Now my question is, okay, the next another important, another point is the fifth group elements, the phosphorus, arsenic, antimony are also called as donor impurities, donor impurities. The fifth group impurities or fifth group elements that is phosphorus, arsenic, antimony are called donor impurities. Why these are called donor impurities? They will donate, you see, here five electrons are there, it is donated one electron. The remaining four forms a covalent bond, they are attached, they are with the, this one only. But the fifth one is left to the, uh, this atom, okay. Therefore, these are called donor impurities. Now my next question is, majority charge carriers are electrons, minority charge carriers are holes, electrons are negative charge, holes are having positive charge. Since negative charge is more than positive charge, is it electrically negative or electrically positive or electrically neutral or we can't say? More amount of negative charge, electrons are more, so negative charge is more than positive charge. Therefore, is it electrically positive or electrically negative or electrically neutral or none of the above or we can't say. It is electrically neutral. Why it is electrically neutral? See, in the same example, same example, how many electrons are there? three electrons. These electrons are having 
negative charge negative charge how many holes are there see in the same one one two two holes are there positive charge any other thing in this figure see this one it's donated one electron donated one electron means it becomes ion whether it's a positive ion or negative ion donated one electron deficient of one negative charge therefore it becomes positive ion how many one donated one electron means it becomes a positive ion how many ions, ions are there in this figure one ion so one positive ion and it is having positive charge so total positive charge is 2 plus 1 3 negative charge is 3 therefore overall it's electrically neutral or not therefore n type semiconductor is electrically neutral similarly in intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor number of electrons is equals to number of holes so positive charge is equals to negative charge therefore that is also electrically neutral so n type semiconductor is neutral uh, intrinsic semiconductor is neutral what about uh, this conductors there are so many free electrons are there at the same time there are also ions will be there that is conductors also electrically neutral all the materials are electrically neutral at any point of time clear so this is n type semiconductor is also electrically neutral next comes p type semiconductor silicon add third group elements then the resulting one is called extrinsic semiconductor and it is called p type semiconductor what are the third group elements boron aluminum gallium indium like that now we'll take the crystal structure of the p type semiconductor here we'll take one boron it's a third group element therefore three valence electrons are there it's surrounded by silicon atoms it's plus form scroll and bond this form scroll and bond form scroll and bond like this Now to form a covalent bond here, an electron is required. There is a strong tendency that it will pull some valence electron from the neighboring atom. Okay, so there hole will be created here. Electron comes. That means indirectly here we are taking it as absence of electron. 
become like this. There is a strong tendency to form a covalent bond. Therefore, here we are taking the absence of electron, that's nothing but a hole to form a covalent bond. Now, in this figure, at this instant of time, how many holes are there? One hole. How many electrons are there? Zero electrons. Okay. Now, temperature increased. Temperature increases means some of the covalent bonds are broken. So, this electron becomes a free electron means here, hole. Electron hole pair is generated. Similarly, electron hole pair is generated. Now, how many holes? One, two, three. How many electrons? So, right now in this figure, there are three holes are there. Two electrons are there. Therefore, holes are majority charge carriers, electrons are minority charge carriers, holes are majority charge carriers, electrons are minority charge carriers. Now, more positive charge than negative charge, is it electrically positive or electrically neutral? It is also electrically neutral. How you are going to say it is electrically neutral? It is accepting an electron to get their stability. Accepting an electron means there are three holes will be there, two electrons plus accepting one electron means accepting one negative, ion, negative charge. That means it becomes one ion. This negative one negative ion. Therefore, this is negative charge, this is positive charge electrically neutral. Now, coming to the energy band diagram, here absence of electron, okay, how much energy required to attract an electron? Okay, it is not equals to 1 electron volt. To attract one electron volt, generally it requires one electron volt. To exit or to attract one electron volt, normal case. But here there is a strong tendency, to get the stability one more electron is only required. There is a strong tendency, that means small amount of energy is sufficient to attract one electron from the neighboring atom. Therefore, therefore there is one energy level called as acceptor energy level existed just above the valence band. That means if you do that much of energy, one electron become free electron becomes a valence electron. How much that is required? Once again it is not, it is equals to 0.05 electron volt if it is a silicon, if 0.01 electron volt if it is a germanium. That acceptor energy level is 0.05 electron volt if it is a silicon, 0.01 electron volt if it is a germanium. Is it clear? Therefore, in p-type semiconductor, majority charge carriers are holes, and electrons are minority charge carriers, and there are ions will be there, therefore it is electrically neutral. There exists an acceptor energy level just above the valence band, that acceptor energy, that is called acceptor energy level, it is equals to 0.01 electron volt if it is germanium, 0.05 electron volt if it is a silicon. Yeah. Now, there are so many number of electrons holes are there, therefore conductivity increases. That is why we are going for adding the impurities that is called, we will get the extrinsic semiconductor. Now, next one is drift. Okay. Now, already I explained take a metal, there are so many number of free electrons are there. 
they are moving in a different directions so net current at any point of time is equals to zero if you apply a field like this all the electrons are moving in this direction therefore current do is flowing in this direction this current is called drift current this current is called drift current and this is this is called drift current this is called current density what is current density formula it is current by area current by area drift current density drift current density is equals to it's current density is given by n mu n e e what is this e is applied electric field total number of electrons charge of electron mobility of electron total number of electrons mobility of electrons cons, uh, charge of an electron applied electric field this is called drift current next now this is for conductors this formula is for conductors what about for semiconductors same the same phenomena is existed electrons will be there but at the same time holes also will be there for a semiconductor electrons will be there holes will be there total current equals to electron current plus hole current therefore j drift current equals to j drift due to holes plus j drift due to electrons summation total current equals to electron current due to electrons plus current due to holes now why it has to be added why it, has, it should not be subtracted holes hole l is moving in the direction means hole is moving in the direction means electron is moving in this direction so it has to be subtracted or not okay it's not like that holes are moving in this direction means current due to holes is in this direction electron is moving by in this direction means the current is opposite direction to the electron moment therefore current due to electrons is equal therefore total current is equals to summation of hole current plus electron current therefore the current density j drift equals to j drift due to holes plus j drift due to electrons what is this holes its number of holes equals to i assume it as p this is mu p mobility of hole charge of electron is equals to charge of hole therefore it's same applied electric field is e the same n mu n e e this is called j drift so take p mu p e plus n mu n e outside okay this is called j this is called sigma into e current density drift current density equals to sigma into e it's applied electric field now this is called ohm's law v equals to ir is one of the ohms law okay that is in terms of voltage current okay in terms of current density electric field and conductivity this is the formula j equals to sigma e 
Now, what is J? Current density. What is E? Applied electric field. What is sigma? Sigma is called conducted. Very, very important for problems point of view. These formulas are very, very important. So, now what is this one? This is nothing but sigma. Sigma equals to P mu P E plus E uh, plus M mu N E. Is clear? It's called conductivity. Next one is, one more formula is resistivity is denoted as rho. Resistivity rho. That is 1 by conductivity. 1 by conductivity is called resistivity. All these formulas are very, very, very important. Units for resistivity are ohm centimeter, ohm centimeter. Units for conductivity mo per centimeter or Siemens per Siemens per centimeter. Clear? There is a one more formula resistance R. This is called resistivity. This is called resistance. Resistance R equals to rho L by A. Units are ohms. Where L is length, A is area. This is resistivity. So this is one formula. These are units. This is one more formula. This is one more then sigma equals to this one. All these are very, very important. Clear? Next. So, in metals only drift current due to electrons will be there. In semiconductors, drift current due to both electrons and holes will be there. Therefore, total is summation of drift current due to electrons plus drift current due to holes. The next mechanism is diffusion. Diffusion. Now take a, some material, either a silicon or a germanium or a metal, something. Let us assume that the distribution of, I take in a metal, assume the distribution of electrons are like this. The distribution of electrons, I have taken example metal. Or instead of metal, better go for a semiconductor. Okay? Take a semiconductor. We are having more number of electrons. This is an imaginary surface. This is x equals to 0. Here x is increasing. Distance is increasing. Now, if the charge carriers are distributed like this, immediately, immediately, there is a movement of charge carriers from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached. If the charge carriers are unevenly distributed as shown in this figure, one side of the imaginary axis more number of charge carriers, other side we are having less number of charge carriers, then automatically there is a movement of charge carriers from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached. What is meant by equilibrium? That means all the, in the entire semiconductor, entire bar equally distributed charge carriers. That means here whatever the number of electrons are there, here also same number of electrons are there. They are equally, uniformly distributed. That's called equilibrium. 
So there is a movement of charge carriers from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached. Clear? Now electrons are moving means current will be there or not? That current is called diffusion current and the current density is called diffusion current density. Diffusion current density. It's clear? That is called J diffusion. Now diffusion to occur, what is the minimum requirement? Drift to take place means drift current has to exist and means compulsory external electric field is required. Diffusion has to be taken means any external field is required? Any external field is required? No external field is required. What is the requirement? Simple. One side more number of charge carriers, other side less number of charge carriers. Charge carriers in the sense either it can be electrons or it can be holes. One side we are having more number of holes, electrons, other side we are having less number of holes, electrons. That is called concentration gradient. That is called concentration gradient. What is the meaning of concentration gradient? The number of electrons or holes are going to change with respect to distance. This, in this case, example, it is dn by, it is called dn by dx. Okay. This J diffusion due to electrons is given by E d n d n by d x. Similarly, same concept, if holes means they will move in the opposite direction. That means here more number of holes are there, here less number of holes are there means they will move in this direction. Or here more number of holes, here less number of holes, holes also will move. Either holes or electrons will move from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached. Electrons or holes are changing means, moving means, current will be resulted. This J diffusion due to holes is given as minus P dP dP by dx. What is this? Uh, sorry, minus E. My e means charge. E is charge. This is called diffusion constant for electrons. Diffusion constant for holes. Concentration gradient of electrons. Concentration gradient of holes. J diffusion equals to E dn dn by dx. J diffusion due to holes equals to minus E dp dp by dx. This is called concentration gradient of holes, concentration gradient of electrons, diffusion constant for electrons, diffusion constant for holes, charge of electron, charge of hole. Clear? So, diffusion has to take place means the only requirement is internal concentration gradient. Drift has to be taken place means external electric field is required. In metals, only drift mechanism will be there. In semiconductors, both drift mechanism will be there, diffusion mechanism will be there. In semiconductors, both electrons and holes will be there. In metals or in conductors, only holes, electrons will be there. Okay, that's the difference between the conductors and semiconductors. Now, if I want total current drift, current density, total current density, J total is equals to current density due to holes plus current density due to electrons. Now current density due to holes is equals to current density due to drift holes plus current density due to diffusion holes. Similarly, J due to electrons, current density due to electrons is equals to J drift due to electrons plus J diffusion due to 
electrons. So, summation of all these four is equals to total current density. Now, what is this drift? P mu P E into E. This is drift current due to holes minus E dp dp by dx. This is diffusion current due to holes. This one n mu n e e plus e dn dn by dx. Is clear? This is called this. The next. So, this about the current density. Now, what is this mu? Mu is called mobility. Now, what is the meaning of mobility? How freely the electron or hole is moving. Mu n, mobility of electron, how freely electron is moving. Mu p, mobility of hole, how freely it is moving, hole. Now, whether this mu n and mu p both are same or different. Take down this one, it is a nucleus, hole will be there here, free electron is here. Free electron can move randomly any direction or not. So, mobility for this one is higher or not? This is, it is under the nucleus force, it cannot move whatever the way it wants. It has to be moved according to the, it in the nucleus force, it has to be in this one only. Whereas your free electron can move in any direction. So, this can move freely, but it cannot move freely. It has to move within this one. Therefore, mobility of electron is more than mobility of holes. Mobility of electron is more than mobility of hole. If you see silicon germanium mobility of electron mobility of hole, there is one tabular Mobility of holes, one minute, here yeah, it is also. <coughs> this is germanium, this is silica. Okay. See, here mobility of electron is 3000. In germanium, if it is in silicon, it is 1800. Whereas holes, mobility is in germanium, it is 1300, silicon it is high. Okay. Now see here, electron mobility is more than hole mobility or not? Electron mobility is more than hole mobility or not? It is around 2.5 times, approximately. Mobility of electron is approximately 2.5 times that of the mobility of hole. And mobility of germanium is more than mobility of silicon. In, mobi in silicon, mobility is less compared to germanium. Why? Silicon atomic number, if you see, it is smaller one compared to germanium. So, germanium is far away from the nucleus force. Silicon is nearer to the nucleus. Therefore, it is more attracted by the nucleus force. It is very difficult to have a movement. Whereas, in germanium, it is far away. Therefore, germanium mobility is more than 
ninja mein mobility of electrons and holes is more than mobility of electrons and holes in silicon and in that one mobility of electron is more than mobility of hole approximately around 2.5 times is clear next one is the units for mobility is units for mobility is centimeter square per volt second or meter square per volt second one of the gate question units for mobility is centimeter square per volt second or meter square per volt second the next one as temperature increases what happens to mobility mobility decreases mobility mobility is proportional to t power minus 3 by 2 on an average it will change for silicon germanium electron and holes is continuous is still changing but an average mobility of mobility is as temperature increases mobility decreases the relationship between mobility and temperature is mu is proportional to t power minus 3 by 2 next there is a one relation known as einstein relation einstein relationship which is also important for problems dp diffusion constant for holes by mobility equals to dn by mu n equals to vt what is vt volt equivalent temperature okay this is this equation is called einstein relationship here what is vt it's t by 11600 or 26 millivolts at a room temperature or this vt is called k bar t or it is also called as kt by q what is k and k bar k r k bar is called boltzmann constant where k r k bar is called boltzmann constant okay now what is the difference between k and k bar okay i'll give that formula K equals to 8.62 into 10 power minus 5 electron volt per degree Kelvin. Boltzmann constant is 8.62 into 10 power minus 5 electron volt. K bar equals to 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 joules per degree Kelvin. per degree kelvin one electron volt is equals to 1.69 into 10 power minus 9 joules 1.6 one electron volt equals to 1.69 into 10 power minus 9 joules minus 19 minus 9 joules minus 19 sorry It is one electron volt equals to 1.69 into 10 power minus 19 joules. In electronics, generally joules is the unit, but in electronics, the joules is a too large quantity. To make it as a requirement for small one, we are having one electron volt. We will use generally electron volts in electronics because joules is a bigger quantity. Therefore, what is one electron volt? One point six nine to ten power minus nineteen. Okay. The next. now we will have a break after break we will continue with the remaining things
in the valence shell it is not responsible for current yes we will continue with the questions kirtana sir is valency electron having charge whether electron is a valence shell or free electron it will have charge it will have charge compulsory whether it is responsible for current or not that depends on whether it's a free electron or valence electron uh, charge will be always existed is clear kirtana if it is in the valence shell it is not responsible for current clear kirtana puja why did you write plus 4 in silicon in anti semiconductor i mean that what is the meaning of 4 plus 4 yes i got it your question take a silicon it's a neutral all, i said all the materials are neutral that means total positive charge is equals to total negative charge clear i have indicated like this now what i have done 1 2 3 4 4 electrons i have shown explicitly or not that means is it having a 4 negative charge i have explicitly shown this you have one four negative charge four electrons that means four negative charge is minus four no it's a neutral therefore i have to explicitly represent it as plus four what is the meaning of this thing plus four minus four it's a neutral otherwise you can indicate like this that's a neutral but my, we have required the covalent bond has to be formed that's why we have taken four valence electrons for negative charge is shown externally therefore to counterbalance it as a neutral you are indicating plus 4 so for negative charge for positive charge it's a neutral clear puja next it's piyush binani how does the imperfections is defined for a crystal and how it affects the properties of crystal in terms of conductivity and resistivity okay that thing will take it in problems while explaining will add a impurity what is going to happen we are going to see that one that i will explain in the next session okay piyush next why we use ultra pure silicon crystal for fabrication as you told its conductivity it's ultra pure silicon crystal but where i said ultra pure okay actually it's a pure silicon crystal for fabrication as you told its conductivity is very less is yes, good question that but we are going to see it in vlsi okay in the last sessions we are going to see what are your, your question why you have to take a pure silicon crystal for fabrication fabrication comes in vlsi right now there is no need of that of that much purity clear yes what are that comes in pure, uh, vlsi clear piyush next puja why in phosphorus atom extra electron does not generate holes but in intrinsic you consider hole when electron is leaving okay now why in phosphorus atom extra electron does not generate holes but in elect intrinsic semiconductor consider electron hole when electron is leaving now one important point is see here there are four electrons it forms a covalent bond with this one okay when you break the covalent bond when you break the covalent bond then only electron hole pair is generated without a bond either it's a meta um, ionic bond or covalent bond if you break it it is not going to have a whole electron pair now the fifth electron it's not covalent bond is not formed therefore it becomes electron free electron no need of hole if you break the covalent bond yes it will generate now in intrinsic semiconductor if you see i have taken here silicon here also i have taken silicon there is a covalent bond is there covalent bond is broken therefore therefore it's a free electron hole pair is generated without covalent bond no problem but if covalent bond is broken electron hole pair is generated is clear puja 
If any of the four covalent bonds are broken, electron hole pair will be generated. Fifth unattached electron becomes a free electron without creating hole. That is the difference. Clear, Pooja? Next, Saikath Kohli. In P-type extensive semiconductor, the hole formed, forms the bond. Yes. But I guess it should be electron of silicon and boron will form the bond. And that electron of boron will come from some of free electron of silicon. Am I correct? Okay. 